The African Media Development Foundation, AMDF, on Wednesday said Nigeria has the highest number of violations of press freedom in Africa. Reports have shown Nigeria is having the highest incidences of violations in 2023 with cases associated with February-March elections held in the country. The last 30 years has witnessed drastic advancement in media development, the widespread acceptance of independent media digitization of media platforms and media mainstreaming. Now, these have increased both access to information and information dissemination at the, on, on the world scale at large. Now, um, these past 30 years have not been without their challenges as the media industry continues to face attacks in various forms, both by state and non-state actors. Issues bothering on safety of journalists, freedom of expression, and media freedom remain the core of human rights violations. In Africa, the problem of poor remuneration of journalists, government interference, and outright suppression continues to limit practice of journalism global trends, revealing also that journalists are the most targeted profession by repressive governments. Now, in 2023, like every other year, uh, there has been a year, it has been a year of continued struggle for journalists who are constantly in the front line of news coverage and reportage. And tonight we talk about shaping the future of, uh, you know, protecting journalists. Well, joining us live to discuss this is Choma Ezenwafo. She is a broadcast journalist and she is the head of news, Kuwazobia Info, Port Hackett. Also joining us is Enoch Steven, his Plus TV Africa's correspondent in Kanu State. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. Good evening. Yeah, happy Press Freedom Day, Miriam. Yes, <laughs> same to you. Hi, Enoch. Good um, evening. Thank you for having me. Happy Press Freedom Day. Yes. Um, Enoch, I'm going to start with you because you or, you covered this election. I remember that we had a lot of back and forth um, on election days uh, from February to March. Um, the, the, the statistics that we just rolled out is very damning because it looks like uh, more and more journalists are dying in the line of duty. And every year, just as we are doing today, we celebrate press freedom. But can you really say the press is free, especially in a country like Nigeria, that its democracy is pretty nascent? Well, for me, um, in Nigeria, I'd say um, the press is not uh, totally free because um, there are a lot of issues, you know, when it comes to reporting the truth. Right. So as a journalist, sometimes when you want to report the truth, you know, um, you might be, you know, attacked sometimes like during um, the election, my phone was almost smashed because I was trying to capture a moment where um, some people were trying to, you know, uh, do something fishy. So at some, I was just very, very lucky that um, someone just tapped me and said, hey, leave this place. If not, my phone would have been smashed. And we had security, you know, um, just looking there. Um, last year as well, I was arrested last year, you know, um, during the election, I, I was doing um, a report and then I saw a government agency, uh, okay, let me just check this agency and see what's happening there. And I went inside there in less than 20 minutes, you know, and an allegation came that I was part of a, a theft syndicate, you know, that, that attacked the police a, a, a few um, weeks then the police came arrested me with guns i was locked up in the you know um state ci you know until you know my editor and other people you know spoke and then um I, they told them okay this guy is a journalist yes he is not a thief or anything of such so that is just leads to, to um what i have happened we have there are issues where um if, yeah during the election i think um the uh, governorship election right um i was restricted from having access to the INEC um, um, office, which was a coalition center. And um, I was outside waiting for when I would likely you know, be given access because we're told that the issues of overcrowding was why some of us were not allowed inside. And I was standing outside on my own trying to do my report and then I was tear gassed. I was, my, my eyes were all red. I was, you know, tears everywhere. And then I had to leave while I still, you know, went back, you know, to report. And then, issues that we saw during the elections that you know sometimes when you report and you just get you, you are it's just like you're handcuffed in some circumstances yes so i wouldn't say the press is really free in nigeria but i can say um th there's a lot we can do yes yeah. but i wouldn't say let me come to you chairman actually free in nigeria all right 
All right, let me come to you, Choma. Uh, what is the value of the average journalist in Nigeria, or let alone Africa? Because you see, um, when we were growing up, teachers were, you know, you asked a child if, what they wanted to be when they grew up, and they said they wanted to be their teacher, or you asked who their hero was, they'd say their teacher. Um, the same could have been said for a journalist back in the day, but today, in today's world, especially on the continent of Africa, where many proponents of, um, you know, um, press freedom have said that Africa is yet to understand the power of journalism or even embrace it. So I'm asking you, as someone who's been on this job for a long time and reported on several diverse stories, um, how revered is the average journalist in Nigeria, let alone on the African continent? How, how, how what? Valuable? Valuable or revered, yes. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's similar to a question I was asked very recently by the renowned professor of journalism uh, when it comes to whether uh, journalism is a profession or not. And I, I believe that question is also the reason why my answer is going to be whether we are revered. No, we are not. We, we, we should be revered more than uh, compared to how journalists in Nigeria and journalists in other clients or should I say say that are, are, are not treated, uh, treated differently actually. The value of a journalist in say America is totally different from the, the value placed on the same profession in Nigeria and and perhaps it's because of the way people get into practice and the way it's not regular. Let me not say regulated, but the way there isn't any standard that is held by, say, a council, like you would find in medicine or nursing or an old kind of profession, or even law. Okay? So when we talk about press freedom, I like to remember that we need, we need to better guide the people who work into it so that we can better conduct ourselves and, and demand the respect that we deserve. Mm. And so are we revered? No, we are not. And we should be revered, considering that we uphold the truth in the society and uphold uh, and hold government accountable. I, I mean, I, I am always reminded every day that um, our profession is the only profession in the Nigerian constitution, holding government accountable and speaking truth to power. And if any profession does this, if, if no other profession does this, of course, we need to be revered better, and unfortunately, that's not the case. The reason why I ask this is because, you know, we're very quick to say that we're the fourth estate of the realm and, you know, um, our, job, <laughs> our job is to hold our government at all levels to, uh, to account. But again, many would also say that we have played a role one way or the other in how we're being mm. treated, um, you know, across the country and also on the continent. Um, I, we've heard politicians, you know, talk down on journalists or even come on our shows and say that we don't do proper journalism or that we don't investigate. What is the, um, what is the average journalist's um, insurance cover? Do we have any? And um, what is the, like he said, when he was on election day, he could have been lynched. Anything could have happened to him if not for people who stood up for him. Um, so let's look at the hazards of the job because we're looking at shaping the future of rights when it comes to press freedom here. Um, so, Choma, again, I ask, <laughs> do we play a role in how we're being treated, um, you know, by these yeah. people? Unfortunately, the answer to that question is actually yes, Miriam, and I'll explain. Uh, the reason is because of the, the, the entry point to the profession is quite low. And so we find that a lot of people who have no business in the profession are all over it. And so now there's freedom of expression, which is what journalism is really all about. But unfortunately, that's also the reason why uh, it's become an all commerce affair, meaning that it, it, um, it's lost the professionalism that it ought to have. So it, it's just a practice, meaning that anybody can practice it. And so even those without, I mean, a journalist should have integrity, a journalist should be someone that is honest. And so when you find individuals without these basic values of humanity and get into the profession, they, they take it along with them. And so that, that, that's where you find people uh, not upholding the ethics of journalism. Because we cannot talk about World Press Freedom Day without talking about ethics in journalism. And there are certain debates that when it comes to objectivity, that is still ongoing. Mm. And some people, what, I mean, objectivity has become subjective. <laughs> and the reason is because of the quality. Okay, so all of those uh, challenges uh, of the journalists can be, can be reshaped if we begin to 
demonstrate professionalism and prioritize certain values like uh, no honesty and fairness and balance and um, and say no when we mean no and, and stick to truth. What is truth? Not the multiple truths that we find these days. Mm. And um, even even to so you talked about insurance. I always say to my colleagues that. Uh, your biggest protection is your professionalism. The moment you become a professional as a journalist, you expose yourself to danger. You expose yourself to any harm that may be near that. And so the best way to stay safe, especially during elections, which is usually where journalists get attacked the most, is to stay professional, okay? It is not um, stay professional and observe your environment. Those two usually I find to be the best way to be able to report freely and do your job. And yes, we we wish our society allowed for more freedom of the press. But until then, we actually do have a role to play. Journalists have a role to play. And, and that means we need to demand for whoever gets into this profession to uphold certain ethics and certain values. And, and, and that's also what brings me to the Nigerian Press Council. I'm asking that Nigerian press can do more than exist to actually um, and become a body that helps to hold journalists to account themselves to the extent that professionalism is upheld. The way we find it in the law profession, in medicine, and um, in nursing, and every other profession that we admire, but that we do our own profession journalists. Uh -huh. So I believe that uh, we can actually get more freedom of the press. When we find the practitioners opposing the ethics of the profession and the values it goes with, and um, if all of us do that, I believe we'll get really a step closer to getting government to reflect the words that they speak every press freedom day, okay, to actually <laughs> oppose those words and, mm. and truly, truly allow for free press. Mm. Let me come back mm. to you, Enoch. Um, Enoch, what's mm -hmm. so Let's talk about remuneration here and um, how the average journalist is treated by its employees, uh, employers, I beg your pardon. Um, one of the major problems that we've noticed, especially in Nigeria, is poor remuneration and poor treatment of journalists. And most of, of the time, some of those in court, permit me to use that word, um, brown envelope <laughs> journalists, would point to the fact that they're poorly remunerated, and that's why they go after some of these very easy stories. What's your take? Oh, Enoch, I think we've lost you, so I'm going to come back to <laughs> I'm going to come back to you, Choma. Let's talk about remuneration. Choma, are you there? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so uh, the truth is, it's actually connected to what I said earlier. A lot of um, journalists find themselves misbehaving, and it's all because of welfare. Journalists no longer news, journalists are not properly paid. And uh, let me say that, and also say kudos to those who are actually, those uh, media owners that are actually paying journalists what they deserve. But a huge number of journalists are underpaid, underappreciated, and and um, and and uh, a lot of the issues around being able to practice isn't properly covered. Okay, and um, this is the reason why you, you find that um, a lot of people have dropped. Uh, you know, the professionalism is quite uh, uh, low, and and a lot of people practice without observing all of the ethics of journalism. Okay, because the remuneration is quite low, and uh, I am going to say at this point that if you are a media owner and you still uh, do not prioritize uh, pay, good pay for the journalist, you are changing yourself because a well-paid journalist is better positioned to actually do the job. It, it entails, I mean, a journalist, journalist doesn't sleep, <laughs> I, I know that for sure. And uh, when they do, they are thinking about tracking stories that they are tracking, and the brain kind of hardly shuts down. Okay, uh, so whatever a journalist is, is asking to be able to get the job done and actually focus on the true facts of the story, they deserve it, and they should be paid it, and insurance should be part of it as well. Uh, Enoch, I think you're back now. Let's, let's still talking about remuneration here. Um, just like doctors and 
um, nurses, these people, you know, take an oath to, um, you know, save lives. I guess we would say same thing for the police and soldiers. They take an oath, whether they're poorly remunerated or not. They have an oath that they've taken. Maybe because we've not taken an oath, but then the ethics that, you know, guard this profession. Should we um, be saying that, well, maybe because we're not being paid, we'll just take anything and just do a shoddy job. Does that not one way or the other defeat the idea of even wanting to be a journalist in the first place? Are you not supposed to tell truth to power? Enoch, you know, that question is for you. Okay, for Paul. Can you hear me? Uh, I think that we lost Enoch again. Enoch, are you there? Uh, ap apologies, Enoch. Uh, I think that you're having a bad connection there. All right, Chama, before we wrap things up here, let me come back to talk about the broadcasting watchdog. Um, that's the NBC, for those of us who are in broadcasting. And of course, like you said, the press council. Uh, but most importantly, um, the NBC. Um, many have pointed fingers to the watchdog to be also an appendage of the, every government in power, whether it be the APC, the PDP, and we're talking about Nigeria here. Um, many have said that they have um, suppressed certain media houses. We've seen uh, people getting fines sometimes because maybe they speak against uh, the government of the day. Um, how objective would you rate the NBC? I know that they're watching, uh, but it's Press Freedom Day. Actually, you're putting in a very, very um, <laughs> tight spot. Okay, uh, I, I believe the NBC can do better. We we would really do a better job if we have regulators that provide more than uh, signs, but also provide support and acknowledge that there are challenges in trying to get the job done. I think that regulators who understand and function with that reality would better support press freedom. Any other behavior outside this does not support press freedom and obviously is suppression. Let's leave it at that. Mm. <laughs> you know, I think that you're back. Let's quickly, would you like to add something to this? How well do you think the NBC has done in terms of helping the media to be a bit more free other than being seen as an appendage of the government in power? In closing. I think you need to unmute yourself so we can hear you. Okay, can you hear the question again? I think I have a poor network. Yes, I can hear you. Can you? Yeah. So can, can you repeat the question? I have a very poor network. So, so we're I talking can... about the NBC and, of course, yes. um, the role that they play in making sure that we are better at broadcasting as opposed to people who have condemned them to be an appendage of every government that's in power. Okay, uh, well, I feel the NBC can do a better, uh, a better job, you know, yes, uh, by um, ensuring press freedom. We saw, um, you know, find out, you know, being imposed on the particular TV station. And sometimes when you hear of these things, you, okay, that you, would, you think, okay, is the NBC not supposed to ensure that the media or the press is free or we broadcasters, you know, are free to you know, report, you know, uh, what we see? So, uh, I would want to, you know, delve deep into it, but I, I feel that um, the NBC can do a lot, you know, better, if you ask me. Yeah. I like how diplomatic we are today because we don't want to get into trouble, eh? <laughs> but I want to say thank you. Um, uh, Chema Zemwafo mm -hmm. is a broadcast journalist and mm -hmm. she is also the head uh, of news at Kuwa Zobia Info in Port Harcourt. And uh, Enoch Stephen is Plus TV Africa's correspondent in Kano State. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. And happy World Press Freedom mm -hmm. Day again to you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, that's it on the show tonight. I am Mary Anna Cohn. Don't forget, you can play catch up and watch all of our previous conversations on our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. And don't forget, Plus TV Africa is also on Glow World. You can watch us from wherever you are across the world. I am Mary Anna Cohn. Have a good evening. <laughs>